Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Kind of escalated pretty quickly. Let me show you the engine first. It's a two liter Renault lamp. That's the original engine that came with the car. Um, didn't do anything to it. The only thing I did was change the ARP Conrod bolts because they are a weak link. Um, and then I slapped a turbo on it. It's running 230 horsepower. Considering the weight, it's uh, pretty, pretty fast. Um, what do we have here? Um, that's your turbo with a heat blanket. And then obviously bigger radiator, you have oil cooler. Everything is either custom or non-custom, but upgraded, um, dedicated fuel line. Uh, you have your blow off valve and I'm actually really really proud of this little um, cold air area scoop thing I made essentially all, all it is is basically just a divider um, and all the air actually comes through the bumper through these holes so this area is actually really really cold when when you're driving um, what else can I tell you about this uh, thing? Oh, the, yeah, it's running uh, DTA um, S60 Pro ECU standalone. Um, I did all my own, um, I want to call it motorsport wiring. Um, it is kind of motorsport because I've used all the motorsport components, but since I've never done it before, I can't really claim it's motorsport, but it is a sort of dedicated uh, wiring loom for the engine and for the interior. Um, essentially, there is almost nothing left from the original Clio, apart from a few little bits and blobs, and the engine. Um, have some big plans, that's probably why I kind of created my channel. Um, I am planning to go big turbo, big power, everything big, you know, go big or go home. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the exterior of the car. Um, largely, it stayed pretty much the same as the original Clio, obviously. Um, I decided not to go for wide arches or anything like that. The only modifications to the exterior we have super cool mirrors that are actually shit. You can't really see anything through them. But for aerodynamics and because I already have them, they were 20 quid. I'll probably change them in the future. Um, plexiglass windows, um, actually all of this is fiberglass. Doors, bonnet. That's standard plastic, which was a surprise to me. Originally, when I thought they were metal, I was looking online to try and find something out of fiberglass, lightweight. And then I was amazed, like nobody did them, nobody. And then I found out that they were plastic originally. Those are blanks as well. So basically the whole point of this car is to be as light as possible. I wanna say as powerful as possible, but for now we only have 230 horsepower. And it's a nice matte primer gray. It's not really primer, it's actually battleship, uh, Nardo battleship gray, um, which I love. Um, then we have layering graphics. At the front, we have quite a few um, air scoops. Those are for brake ducts, uh, cooling, uh, front splitter with my homemade uh, Naka ducty things. I don't know what you call them. I think it works. So even if it doesn't, it looks cool. Um, the original one I made was out of uh, 12 mil marine ply. This is HDPE plastic. I think it's a little bit too flexible, so I'm not too sure about that. Um, single wiper conversion. Oh yeah. Almost like I was born in Essex. Why not? And I can actually put it right in the center for extra kudos points from the bloods, but I don't really do that because we're the racetrack and uh, we are all serious. Um, toe straps, that's uh, FIA new regulations. Um, they have to be on both sides. Come, let me show you the boot. Oh, another really cool feature. Side exit exhaust. Who doesn't like side exit exhaust? The only reason why I actually have a side exit exhaust is because there was no room for diffuser otherwise. Look how cool that thing looks. A lot of people say, oh, does it actually do anything? Um, 
I don't know, but it feels like it does. It's fully adjustable, so I can adjust the height from the ground and uh, different angles. Right now it's set at about 13 degrees, I believe. Uh, from the research I've done, that's basically what you kind of want from sort of street-ish legal car. Um, obviously it's not a Formula, obviously it's not a British touring car. So 13 is about is about all right for sort of downforce. Um, I'm hoping if it's generating around 40 to 50 kgs of downforce, which is a lot, I guess, um, it's good. But saying that, I feel it definitely does something in really fast corners, around 80, 90 miles an hour. I can definitely feel it pushes the, the rear down and it's not as lively. Uh, let's see what we have in the boot. I actually use it sometimes, not for your shopping though, but to carry tools and stuff like that. Um, pretty Spartan, everything has been thrown away, chopped away, uh, smoothed over and stuff. Uh, the original floor has been cut out, so we have an aluminum plate, again, for weight saving. Then we have a two liter swirl pot, uh, Bosch 044, I believe, uh, fuel pump. Uh, filter, lightweight battery, um, that's about it. Also some NACA ducts, that's for cooling uh, because it has no heater, no air con, nothing. And it gets really, really hot in there. So you do need some steady st stream of airflow uh, to keep you cool. Um, and those are the adjusters for the splitter through the inside, that's the, the front angle. Okay, let's talk about the interior. That's what they call PS de resistance. Obviously the steering wheel is um, removable and adjustable. It's not very glamorous getting into a race car, is it? But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, let me put my special trick. So, I'm not gonna put a steering wheel on yet. Um, pretty Spartan, as you can uh, see, there is no aircon, as I said before, there is no heaters, there is no ABS, there is no traction, nothing. Um, that's my control panel that basically controls everything on the car. You have your um, wipers, those are both fuel pumps, that's to start the car, then uh, obviously that's for the wash nozzle, that's to switch on and off dash, that's a uh, fan for the radiator, if, if, if I need to switch it on those for the lights, where well, right now it doesn't actually have lights. Heated windscreen, turn signals, little horn. And that's e -pass, that's basically electronic steering. Um, dash is, again, DTA fast, that's the um, NT series dash. Um, it has lots of different features. Everything is fully customizable. You can do whatever you want. Um, has a bunch of uh, diagnostics um, on it. It has uh, different screens for um, different gauges. Also, it has um, GPS. That's how I'm getting my speed. That's basically a GPS unit, antenna. So the car knows where it is all the time, so it's telling me all the speed. And you can have a map, lap timer and everything. Um, barely use it, to be honest with you, of all, the, all of those features. Es essential information like oil temperature, water temperature, fuel level, all is there. Um, this car also has launch control. I'm not going to do it now because, um, well, it's lunchtime at Snetterton. And I don't want to cause any uh, controversy because it's loud and it actually speeds some fire. There is actually a video. Uh, somewhere on my channel. Um, I'll put a tag at the bottom. Uh, this is the button for launch control. You press that button, you mash the pedal to the floor. You can actually adjust with this knob what RPM you want to set it at. And basically you just sort of sit there, put the first gear, drop the clutch and off you go. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool um, feature, um, but only if you want to have some fun at um, as the car park 
or Tesco or whatever rocks your boat, but not really useful for sort of uh, for a racetrack. Um, obviously, if I was competing, then launch control would be would be useful. But right now, it's a bit of a gimmick. Um, roll cage. That's um, Essentially, that's a six-point uh, basic clubman uh, roll cage, which I've upgraded to eight-point cage um, with different gussets, B-pillar, A-pillar gussets. Um, and yeah, essentially, that's what uh, makes the car so rigid and s handle so well. Um, two bucket seats, gear stick, steering wheel. What else do you need? Um, let me talk about the brakes, the tires and the wheels a little bit. Those are Brembo's from, I believe they actually use them on both uh, Clio 197 or Clio, what's the other one, Clio 200 and also Megane 225. Um, the discs are custom made by Goodspeed, they're 280 mil uh, vented two-piece discs with uh, aluminium bells. Uh, J grooved, yeah, like proper race car. And currently it's running Carbon Lorraine RC6 um, brake pads. I think they're brilliant, but next I'm gonna try some PBS pads. And I have a few different sets of wheels. Those are Oz Super Legeris. I also have Team Dynamics and I have Ultra Legeris for my um, rain tires. And for tires, I use Extreme performance tires. They are really, really good. Um, this in particular one is VR2. They actually do quite a few different compounds and different types. They have uh, VR1 is for drift, drift cars or street cars basically. VR2 is basically a street legal uh, semi-slick tire with uh, different um, compounds for, for the rubber. Um, soft, medium and hard. Those are brand new uh, medium uh, R7A compound. Basically, they're a medium compound, but they have the same characteristics of um, um, warm up and uh, maximum heat uh, that the tire can perform at as the um, hard compound. I think they perform really, really well. I've tried this car on slicks, proper race slicks, and honestly, the difference is negligible and obviously this you can run on the road you don't have to sort of worry about them um, so i'm really happy about those okay guys i hope you like my little walk around of my uh french race car on the cheap not um there is nothing else left for me to do but start the car fuel pump and don't forget, kids, safety first, yeah? Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Even race drivers stole their cars.